it's Anna from Brightling Gardens and today I just wanted to do a quick overview of EC or electrical conductivity and how that pertains to hydroponic gardening. So EC was actually one of those things that turned me away from hydroponic gardening early on. The reason for that was I'm not big into exact measurements. I really don't like baking. I don't like following instructions. So to me, the thought of having to take this specific measurement of electrical conductivity seemed overwhelming and a little too in depth for how I typically garden outside. Now, once I dug down into it, EC actually ended up being a really simple measurement and a very valuable way to determine if the nutrient solution that you have mixed up is correct for the type of plant that you're trying to grow. So today I wanna to encourage you, if you are new to hydroponic gardening, don't turn away from it just because of EC. EC is not an overwhelming concept. It's super easy to learn and it's very easy to implement in your hydroponic system. Let's start with the basics. EC measures a substance's ability to conduct electricity. And the way that it's doing that is it's measuring the dissolved salts and ions in the water and therefore determining the electrical conductivity of that solution. This is of course a valuable measurement if you're trying to determine, say, the safety of drinking water. But in hydroponics, the goal of measuring EC is to determine if the nutrient solution that you've mixed up is accurate for the plant that you're trying to grow. EC is measured in microsiemens per centimeter, which looks like this. And essentially that's just telling you how many dissolved salts, ions, minerals are in your water compared to pure water. So pure water has an easy measurement of zero because it is pure water. But a hydroponic solution might have an EC measurement of over 1,000 or even over 2,000 depending on what your nutrient solution is and what type of plant that you're trying to grow. This right here is a TDS meter. TDS just stands for total dissolved solids. And again, the goal is to measure how pure your water is or how many solids are present in your water. This particular TDS meter can measure both EC as well as PPM. And PPM stands for parts per million. That is not something that we're gonna review in this video today, but PPM is kind of another way of measuring the purity of your water or how strong your nutrient solution is. It just measures it in a different way, which is parts per million. So how many parts per million of a certain substance is included in your solution? Again, it's just a fancy way of measuring your, the concentration of your nutrient solution. For the sake of today's video, we are only going to focus on EC or electrical conductivity. And for my hydroponic gardening purposes, I exclusively focus on EC and I actually don't really bother to measure the PPM at all. So if you are a beginning gardener and you're just starting your hydroponic journey, do not feel like you have to learn all of these terms. EC is a very simple way and a very effective way to measure the concentration of your nutrient solution. We can stick with just the basics. I wanted to get a little closer just so you guys can see. This is my TDS meter. Now, for the purpose of today's video, we are only measuring EC. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And it does default right away to that PPM measurement. So we're gonna switch the mode on this. And that symbol right there is what we're looking for to measure EC. So this is the function that I'm gonna keep it on. Now this only has three buttons, mode, clear, on, off, slash, hold. And what that means is basically you're gonna use this button to turn it on and off, you're gonna use this button to clear the measurement that you've just taken, and you're gonna use this button to change the mode. So let's go ahead and measure some drinking water that I've got behind me. Okay, so measuring this drinking water that I have in these two champagne flutes. I know that's super strange. I'm totally out of jars because all I do around here is propagate. So I did have some available champagne glasses. Now we have it set to our EC settings, which again is this symbol here. Now what I have in front of me are two different versions of water. So the one on my left here is supposedly pure drinking water that came out of a bottle. And the one on my right is actually water straight out of our tap. We do have well water here on our property and we do use a softener. So I expect that this will certainly have a reading to it since there should be so many dissolved salts in it. Starting with my drinking water on the left, I should be getting a reading of pure zero. And I am not. <laughs> so just for the record, bottled water may or may not be completely pure. I'm gonna go ahead and press this hold button just so we can hold that reading there. 
All right, and we have an EC measurement of 27, which is certainly not pure, but um, you know, it could be something that was included in the glass when I washed it. It could be a mineral bottled water, who knows? So that's as close to zero as we're going to get here because I guarantee this one's gonna be a little bit higher. All right, now we're moving on to the well water that came from our tap. You do wanna hold this for just a couple seconds to enable the measurement to go ahead and stabilize. And it does look like we've stabilized there. All right, and we have a reading of 321. So definitely significantly higher in the well water than it was for the pure bottled water. So let's tie all this back into our hydroponics setup. I'm starting again with my quote, pure bottled water, which we knew was a reading of 27. So close to zero, but not quite there. Now let's add a little bit of nutrients into this solution and see what that does to our EC reading. So I have one teaspoon, which is certainly an overdose for this volume of water, but let's see what it does. We wanna mix this around as good as we can, just to make sure it's evenly distributed. Okay, so now I have a slightly green version of certainly not safe to drink water. Let's see what our EC reading has to say about this one. Okay, I had to get my finger in there so I could press the hold button. And this is extremely high. So we got a reading of 9,548. Most plants, they wanna be right within that 1,000 to 2,000 range. So this would be a very, very concentrated nutrient solution. We certainly wanna dilute this down. So this is our first exercise. We have an EC reading that is way too high for our plants. So what is our next step? Our next step is going to be to dilute the solution down with as much pure water as we can to lower that EC reading. So I'm gonna go ahead and dilute this down with a little more water. Let's try our measurement again. All right, and just with that simple dilution, we were able to almost cut our EC in half. So our new measurement is 5,893, which is still too high for most plants, but for the sake of our little experiment here, you can see just how much dilution will benefit your EC. Now let's go ahead and reverse that. So I have a very, very diluted nutrient solution in front of me. It should be too weak for what we're looking for. Let's test it out. Now let's test out the opposite. So I have a very, very diluted nutrient solution in front of me. Let's take a measurement and see where it stands. All right, so we are at 1,138. Now let's say my plant requires a EC level of about 2,000. We'll need to add a little bit more nutrients back in. It's really difficult to do this on such a small scale, so I'm probably going to go over, but just know that when you're dealing with, say, a bucket hydroponic system, it's a lot easier to make some of these smaller changes without over-concentrating your solution. Try to mix it up. Now, even with just that tiny amount of nutrients, let's see what our levels are at. All right, 2,291. So we did end up going over on that. Now, if I did wanna get that back down to the 2,000 mark, I would of course dilute my solution a little bit more. So if your EC is too low, you wanna add more nutrients back into your solution. And if your EC is too high, you wanna dilute your solution with a little bit more pure water or as close to pure water as you can get. I like to check my EC levels two to three times a week and definitely every time that I change out the water in my DWC bucket system, which is typically once a week. So I figured today is a great day to go ahead and check my EC levels here. Now the water in these buckets has not been changed for almost a full week, which means I anticipate that the water level will be a little bit low. 
Since these are just seedlings here, my prediction is that my easy level is actually going to be too high because my seedlings just don't take up as much of the nutrients as some of my flowering or vegetative plants will. Let's test out my four banger lid first. I am set to the right setting. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in for just a couple seconds. Make sure you hit that hold button on top to save the reading. And I'm sitting right at 1655 for my measurement, which is actually spot on for my seedlings. So I'm really happy about that. Now I have to go ahead and add more water back into this, but I need to make sure that I have a diluted nutrient solution to go with that water. Otherwise my EC reading will actually end up being a little bit too low. Let's try my green bean plant right next to me. My green bean plant was a little bit higher at 1793. And that's why it's so important to measure each container individually because every plant or every plant combination in this circumstance will actually suck up nutrients at a different rate. So just because all of your levels were the same when you first uh, changed the water out in these, they will likely be different in just a couple days because of that nutrient uptake. Thirteen fifty-five is where my other four banger is. So I'm actually going to add a little bit of nutrients back into that one. I do like to keep it right around the 1500 range for seedlings. Let's test out our poppers. And my pepper plant's at 1919. So that's actually a little bit high. I want to go ahead and dilute this guy down a little bit with some pure water. It's important to note that different plants will require different AC levels and different stages of the growth cycle will require different EC levels. So knowing what type of EC level your specific plant is looking for and where they are at in their growth cycle will set you up for success when it comes to identifying where your nutrient solution should be. Some of the plants that I showed you today have different EC levels. So like my lettuce and spinach, for example, prefers an EC level between 800 and 1000. My peppers, especially during their fruiting stage, they want a much higher EC level between 1500 and 2000. And a lot of my herbs prefer an EC level of 1200 to 1500 with the exception of basil that likes a very low EC of 500 to 800. I will link an article down below. It's an article that I put together about EC levels and in there there's a chart of some of the more commonly grown hydroponic plants and where their EC levels should be at different times throughout their growth cycle. Refer to that chart just so you have a baseline knowledge of where your EC levels should be for different types of plants. Now during the seedling stage, like I said earlier, a lot of times your EC levels can be a lot lower because the seedlings just do not go through the nutrients nearly as much as our vegetative or our flowering or fruiting plants do. Once those plants start to reach a certain size, you'll notice that all of a sudden they're producing a ton of growth, way more new leaves, they've grown by a few inches. That's when you wanna really start looking at your EC levels and increasing your nutrient solution to match how much growth the plant has. That's all I have for you today in this quick video about EC and what it means for hydroponic gardening. I hope that this video inspires you to pursue hydroponic gardening, even if it seems like a complicated system at first. It's really straightforward once you have your process in place and your system installed, and it is such a fun thing to do, especially during the winter months when you can't get outside and get your hands dirty. Nothing beats having fresh greens grown right inside in your own hydroponic setup. It's seriously so rewarding, and I highly recommend giving it a try this winter. If you want to learn more about hydroponic gardening or have questions on some of the setups that I'm using, like my bucket system or my DWC system, leave them in the comment section below. I do have a full hydroponics playlist that is built for beginners and it walks through all the questions and concerns that I had when I was first starting my hydroponics setup. So if you're really wanting to get started on hydroponics this year and just want to learn the basics, the hydroponics playlist is a great playlist for you to check out. If you like learning about indoor gardening or gardening in general, please subscribe to our channel, Bright Lane Gardens. We are a small business, a plant nursery located in Northern Michigan, but we have a huge passion for all things related to growing plants indoors and outdoors. And our channel encompasses a lot of that. Subscribing to our channel and watching our videos helps out small businesses like ours so much. And I can't thank you enough for your time. 
As always, thank you so much for tuning in with me today, and I sure hope to catch you next time.